So remember, we are taking data from a sample using the central limit theorem and making inferences about a population. A lot of times we just simply cannot study every item or individual in a population. A lot of times it's unfeasible or far too expensive, prohibitively expensive. So we have a possibility of two types of errors, errors in hypothesis testing. So if we have this hypothesis that this statement is true, every person you know, is below the height of 12 feet or something like that, right? And if we find enough data in a sample that we don't reject that null hypothesis, so if we make the statement that we can't reject H0 and H0 is actually true in reality, then we've made the correct decision, right? Good for us. So if we don't reject, if that's the decision that we make, and if it's actually true, then boom, correct. Similarly, let's jump down here. If we go ahead and reject H0, if we say that H0, the sample data shows that actually there, there, there are some people that are, you know, 11 feet tall and the standard deviation or whatever is such that, uh, you know, th there, there might be people that are, that are greater than 12 feet, right, for that farcical hypothesis that I said, right? So if you find data that allows you to reject that null hypothesis and, in fact, the population does have, you know, people that are over 12 feet tall, then again, you're making the correct decision. So the errors come into the fact when you fail to reject the null hypothesis, right, and the null hypothesis is actually false. So you're going to have a type 2 error there where we don't reject the null hypothesis when it's false. So we, we state uh, that, you know, given the data, there's, you know, there's 99.9% .9 of all of the samples provided show that there's not going to be a individual of 12 feet height. And then, you know, with a statement like that, all it takes is kind of one, one black sheep, right, in order to disprove the statement that all sheep are white. Uh, and so if H0 is false, but the information that we have tells us to reject H0, then we get a type 2 error, where we don't reject the null hypothesis when it is actually false in real life. We've already talked about type 1 errors, we just didn't give them a name, right? So this is when H0 is true, and we reject H0. So this is going to be uh, alpha, right? This is going to be the level of significance or, uh, that we're going to be assigning to the hypothesis test. So we choose alpha, uh, which is the type 1 error. So this alpha here, oops, sorry, is the type 1 error, and this is chosen usually by us or by the prompt. And then our type 2 error is signified by beta, and we can calculate this one. I say can calculate because we're not going to calculate it in this class. It's not likely that a type 2 error will occur it's possible due to random sampling and that process of random sampling from a population. Questions on the types of errors in hypothesis testing? Is this still like step two? This is still step two. So this is still part of hypothesis testing. Yeah, good question. Okay. 